Imagine launching a brand new website today and within a week, it's already showing up in Google AR overviews, GPT search and perplexity. Now on the flip side, imagine that you've spent thousands of dollars or hundreds of hours building a brand new website only for it to be absolutely invisible in the AI search engines because you didn't optimize it correctly. In this video, I'm going to show you the five steps we've used to rank over 400 websites in the AI search engines, and it'll make the difference between ranking fast in the AI search engines or having your website a complete ghost town. And this isn't just theory. Just the other days, one of our community members, just using one of the strategies that we're going to go through, managed to rank number one in his location for his keyword in one day. So let's get to the first one. And that is making sure your website is structured correctly. More importantly, structured for transactional type keywords. If you skip this, in a few months, you'll have to take a 16 step backwards just to take one step forward. And most people make the same mistake with their websites. They bunch all of their services that they offer in one page and call it a day. This isn't structure, this is laziness and it's SEO suicide. The goal is to create a dedicated service page for each one of the locations that you're trying to rank for. This optimizes for that transactional keyword for that service in that location and it generates the right AI search traffic. And the thing with this is that there's a lot of studies that have proven that AI search traffic converts at nine times better than normal traffic. So if we get this right, you'll never have to worry about where your next customer is coming from again. The thing that a lot of people struggle with is kind of visualizing how many pages do I need for all the locations I want to rank. So I'm going to go through this and give you a couple of tools that will make this very, very easy for you. They're all free, don't worry. Let's take for an example, uh, if I am helping a plumber rank in somewhere in Dallas and I want to rank in all the locations in Dallas. But if I zoom in a little bit, I know that Dallas has some suburbs, things like Cedar Crest and South Dallas and West Dallas and Lakewood and all these other locations. So how many pages do I need now for all the services that I need to offer? Well, I've left a tool for you in the links below that look like this. This is a local service pages generator. It's going to help you visualize this thing out and tell you how many pages you need to build. For example, you put in your business name here. I've put in mixed plumbing and a fake domain, uh, mixedplumbing.com. And I've added all the locations within Dallas, meaning the suburbs that I want to rank for. So Elmwood, Cedar Crest, Parkdale, and West Dallas. I could place in as many as I wanted to. And then on this box, I've added all these services that I'm trying to rank for. This can be emergency plumbing, pipe leak quick repair, hot water installation. Don't just do the one service there. Add as many services as you can. And here we choose the URL pattern. You might have on your website forward slash location forward slash services or the other way around services or locations or something different. Now, one pattern isn't going to outrank another one. What you need to worry about is that the URL structure makes sense and it is consistent throughout your website. For example, I'm going to choose this one here that shows the location as the variable services and then the service as the variable. This will make sense in a second. And all I need to do is create a uh, click generate suggestions. And if I scroll down here, I'll see that it's told me all the pages that I need to build. For example, for Elmwood, for the service emergency plumbing, this is the URL structure, potential structure. And for the same location, I need pipe leak repair, hot water installation. For Cedar Crest, emergency plumbing, pipe leak repair, hot water installation. And you get the idea. But it's given me an understanding of what the URL structure should look like what the titles, the H1 and the possible meta description should look like. The good thing is that you can also copy this CSV if you wanted to, if you put it in a Google Sheet, for example, I've copied it, it's in my clipboard. I'm gonna to go to a brand new Google Sheet and just paste it there. Now you have all the data that you can play around with. So already I know that I need at least 12 pages to rank for all those keywords. And once you have all those pages, we can go to step number two, which is making sure you have the schema or the structured data for each one of these pages. Now, what is structured data and schema? It's a little bit of code that looks like this, essentially it's a JSON file that tells the search engines exactly and instantly what is on your page. And Google and even OpenAI have said in multiple occasions that they use schema for their large search engines. Now, it's not to say that without schema, you're not going to rank, but you're definitely not making your job easier if you do want to rank number one for your location for your service. Now, the first thing that you really need to do is check whether your services page or all your money pages, meaning the pages that are going to convert and get you money, whether that's leads or transactions, have the correct schema. Now, I've done a couple of searches and tests already. There's a free test from Google called Rich Results Test. 
and I've tested a website that is ranking on the third page of Google for Dallas Plumbing. And you can see here that it's got two invalid items, everything looks wrong. There is two bits of schema, but it's not even done correctly. Whereas the one that was ranking number one or number two at least, uh, called benjaminfranklinplumbing.com has three validated items breadcrumb, local business and organization schema. Now there's a lot of schema and the, the number one problem that I see is that people leave it up to a plugin. They install a plugin that says schema markup pro or whatever and call it a day. The issue is that on 90% of websites that I see that have these so-called amazing plugins that build the schema, do it incorrectly. So if you do have a plugin that is doing this, make sure you check whether you have the correct schema. Now, once we've got the pages with the correct schema, the next thing we do is to get a little bit of trust from the search engines by getting backlinks or local citations. Even in the day and age of AI search, GPT search and perplexity, backlinks still matter. This essentially is the vote of confidence of the internet on your website. The more other external domains or websites that are linking to your website, the more authority and trust you have. The problem is that a lot of people don't know how to get them and think that it's gonna be really expensive. And sure, if you're in a competitive niche, they can get a little bit expensive, but there are some free backlinks you can get right away when you publish your website that's going to help you not only get indexed by Google, but rank higher in the search results. Inside our community, I've built a little custom GPT that does this exactly almost for you, at least finds all the local, free local citations listings that you can get yourself on. So here it says your local listings pro. I'm gonna click on this one and it'll ask you a few questions here. Tell me about your business. I'm just going to say uh, it is a plumbing business and we wanna rank in Dallas. The more information you give this GPT, the better you'll do. Perfect, and it's gonna ask you some secondary questions. I'm gonna say, yep, that is correct. And it'll do the search for all the free websites or online directories that you can place your website in. For example, Yelp, uh, Angie from Angie's List, Yellow Pages Manta, Dallas Black Chamber of Commerce directory. That's a really, really good one to get your website on. And a lot of them have a free and a paid subscription. You wanna get yourself a Google Sheet, place all of these in a sheet and go step by step and add your website into all of these locations. For example, this one, business directory, you can always sign up and make an account. Now, when you are doing this, there's one thing that you need to keep in mind and that is keep the NAP consistent. The NAP stands for name, address, and phone number. They need to be the same on all of these citations. You need to do at least 20, 30, 40, however many you can do, the more, the better. Now, we've touched on transactional type pages and why they're so important, but we also need some blog posts. Although people think they're a waste of time, they're really not, just that what they're there for has slightly changed. See, we wanna write a lot of blog content about our niche to solidify ourselves as the topical authority figure within our niche. Essentially, we need to show the large language models that we answer all the questions that people are asking about the niche that we're in. Here, for example, I've got a very weird mind map, but you as the topical authority or the expert, you want to write about all these topics. And one of the easiest structures that really works to this day is the content pillar and satellite approach, where, for example, if we wanna write about clog drains in Dallas, because that's what we wanna rank for, then we have supporting articles, drain causes, quick fixes, and even clog drains prevention tips. So. This one here would be the main blog. And then these other ones are secondary blogs that we make sure we are linking back to the main clog drains or the main pillar page there. So for example, we are creating a blog post that links to drain causes, to quick fixes, and to clog drain prevention tips from the main blog page that we wrote. And we can even take it a step further and turn one of these satellite content or the supporting content into an it its own pillar content of its own. For example, if we want to create clogged drains prevention tips as a content pillar, then we can create supporting content that are things like leak checks and drain care and winter preparation for your clogged drains. Weird example, but I hope that helps kind of visualize that you can really get in depth into all this content. Now, when you're writing this content, there are four things that I want you to keep in mind that will give you the highest possibility to rank really well in the AI overviews and actually get your content indexed and not just ignored by Google. Those four things are making sure you add your own experience into the content. You write with no fluff. You try to write at an eighth grade reading level and wherever possible, use sources to back up your statements. 
Finally, you need to diversify into other content types. I'm sure you've heard this before, and if not, let me introduce you to this really, really wise saying that SEO has kind of evolved from search engine optimization to search everywhere optimization, meaning you want to be on all the video platforms as well, and any other platform that you think might make sense. Because we also know that the AI search engines are sourcing YouTube and TikTok and everything else for that matter, because things like TikTok and Instagram these days are getting indexed by Google as search results. For example, let me show you here. If I Google how to do a quick, how to do a bicep curl, sure, the first answer is an AI overview, but then right away I get some videos and they're not even ranking number one, but they're taking a lot of space in the first page or the search engine results page, which is really, really good. They're taking up a lot of screen real estate, if you will. And if I scroll even further, sure, I get a Reddit link for that, but right below that, I get short form content from YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, and TikTok. And even though these guys aren't ranking, quote unquote, really well, the websites, they are ranking in the first page of Google with their videos. So this stuff is getting indexed. You need to do this. And I know a lot of people get a bit icky about creating short form content, but your success and you ranking number one is just over that other side of that icky feeling. So there you have it. If you follow those five steps, I can guarantee that you're going to rank really fast in the AI search engine. Now we talked about a lot of things here and it can get a little bit overwhelming. Thankfully, I've done a three hour tutorial about how to do SEO in 2025, showcasing all of the strategies that work and we take a deeper dive into all the things like exactly how to create this content, prompts and tools to use for that and how to actually get these backlinks if you want that, all you got to do is watch this video here. Take it one step at a time. There's a lot of content there. Thanks for watching and just comment any questions you might have about what we talked about today. Cheers.